the first five books, the Pentateuch? Oh, he was the editor and writer. Okay, okay. Yeah. So there may well have been written documents that he had available to him. Interesting. Which he would have integrated into what's called the Pentateuch now, the first yeah. five books of the Bible. So is it possible that God told Adam what he did and he wrote it down and got passed down the generations through Noah? What was your Seems thoughts? perfectly reasonable to me. They walked and talked in the garden, the Bible yeah. says. I can imagine Adam saying, so God, how did you create the stars? And uh, yeah. And uh, what about this tree? How did you make that? And, and I could just think it would have been just amazing. And Adam, remember, was a perfect man. Yes. No flaws, no faults. He had a perfect intellect, phenomenal capacity, like the like of which we just don't see today. Yes. But the problem is our thinking is so influenced by the evolutionary concepts, we think about the patriarchs as having swung out of the trees. Mm. <laughs> but instead they were giants of intellect and... Um, but we're just a pale reflection, I think, of what they would have been. Yeah. So I've heard it two ways. I've heard that Adam could have passed this down through the generations mm. and then it got to Moses, or that God could have revealed it to Moses. But either way, the eyewitness was still there because it was God. Yeah. Um, I, do you have a preference on those conclusions? Is there no, a... I think that sounds great. You see, in fact, either way. you can go... Oh, I think both. Okay, yeah. Sorry, oh, yes. both, I, both. I, I think both. Interesting. Um, you have the early records are passed down. Now, it turns out that Noah's father, Lamech, was 56 years old when Adam died. So it's quite possible the record, the information, I'm quite sure they would have had writing um, right from the very beginning, yeah. went from Adam to Lamech to Noah, survived the flood, and Shem, Noah's son, was alive when Abraham was alive. Wow. Wow. So you don't get many steps. It's not like you have the Chinese whispers problem for thousands of generations. Not like that at all. It's very just, few. Just a few generations. Yeah, very and few. Then you're at Moses. Interesting. So we're talking about the ages of things, and we've said that written history, um, most people agree on written history when you talk about the birthday of Dr. Mark Harwood, <laughs> when you talk about when World War II started, uh, maybe even when the Roman Empire was. And further back, um, so people tend to agree roughly on Egyptian history, for example. I know there's some discrepancies. Um, but what we're saying is you don't go much back further back and you get the start of all written history, and that was biblical written history. But some people want to believe that we can go much further back than that, and the way they need to do that is through these radiometric dating methods, which you talked about um, having a number of assumptions. Yes, but assumptions that are driven by an initial belief Yes. about the process of creation. Yes. Okay. So, so for the evolutionist, then, the person who believes in evolution, the deep time, the millions and millions of years, is, is an integral part of that whole story. Yes. If you don't have that amount of time, you don't have time for... For evolution, evolution to have occur. taken place. You can't have an ape turning into a man in just a thousand years. It needs millions of years. Well, not even that's enough as it turns out, but <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what they think. That's right. Yeah. But it's based on a belief. Yes. And the important thing is that the belief begins with the assumption you must explain everything in natural terms. Yes. And the reason is that they reject the supernatural. Mm. So if you reject the supernatural, it's the same as saying, well, there is no God. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is an atheistic belief. Mm. So the deep time and evolutionary position is, in fact, based on a, an a priori belief that rejects God. That's interesting because mostly people would say that we're not, we're not coming to it from a scientific position. It's a faith position because we have to ignore the evidence. But I think what you're saying is that... This isn't evidence, it's, it's a measurement made based on assumptions. And if you change those assumptions, then you change the, your interpretation. Well, that's right. Well, here's the thing. You can change the assumptions around your dating methods and get any age you like, mm -hmm. depending on the assumptions you make. But the worst thing is you can't test any of those assumptions because they're all in the past. Yes. And we don't have the past. Yes. All we have is the present and so I guess the conclusion out of all of that is the only reliable source of age information is a, an historical eyewitness account of what actually happened. And I believe that's what we have in God's Word, the Bible, right from the very beginning. Okay, so let me ask you, how, how old is the Earth? 
Okay, so let's apply that principle. The historical record actually tells us. Yep. Tells us that God created everything in six days. Adam was created on the sixth day of creation. Mm. It tells us that uh, Adam was 130 years old when his son Seth was born and Seth was 105 when his son Enos was born and they're all the way down to Noah and it says in the 600th year of Noah's life the flood took place. You can just add those numbers up. They're all there in Genesis chapter 5. Yep. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to do it. It's straightforward. In fact, I get my grandchildren to do it as an exercise when they get to their 10th birthday. I sit down and we build a timeline of Bible history. Wow. And you'll discover that the flood occurred 1,656 years after the creation. And then you can follow on and discover that Abraham was born about 2,000 years after the creation. From Abraham to Jesus is about 2,000 years. We know that scripturally and also from history. And from the time of Jesus to the present day is about 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. So if you add those up, according to the Bible, and this is not my idea, mm. Here we are about 6,000 years after the creation. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a bombshell. Mm. I mean, 6,000 years? Are you kidding me? Yeah, most people would say that. Yes. And, and look, I've got to be honest, when I realised that, it, it really did take my breath away. Mm -hmm. And I had to say, wow, Lord, there's got to be some evidence of that. But you know there is. Yes. There's enormous amounts of evidence for a recent creation. Yes, it's just that people don't know. Nation there by uh, this um, qualified professor. So I would go along with this. The only thing that I would say is, is different would be Adam was possibly sojourning with God and asking him questions in the Garden of Eden uh, for up to 30 years. And when the seventh day began, which we're in now, that has lasted some 6,000 years as we've just seen. Now, the Bible says there's another thousand years to add to that. So if Jesus returns shortly, that makes a creative day 7,000 years. And that means consecutively going back seven days, 7,000 years apiece, makes 49,000 years. The Bible also says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, that the, the earth, the heavens and the earth were formless and waste. So the creative week begins with the transformation of the planet. The planet was already here before Genesis 1-1 and the universe was already here. So the transformation of planet Earth to what we see today potentially would be around about 48,000 years old. But that still indicates a very quick timeline as this professor has been arguing. And it certainly doesn't um, help the evolutionists who need to have faith in billions of years. So we want to thank him and this particular channel for publishing this on YouTube. Um, we have another one of these and uh, then we also have a, a video on the flood. Thank you very much.